Amen. So my message this morning is and this is what brother brother Roy was talking about and I didn't say uh, share to him but actually what he was sharing to me is what I'm going to be preaching on. Go ahead. Stand up. Um, um, I thank God for every day waking me. Amen. But I, I praise my sovereign above to um, help the humans because God made the virus. And because he did, um, he made one. And now there's two more because um, there's a lot going on earth. And for me, I would like for instead of words, for humans to start actually not being afraid of the virus, but be afraid of what the creator could do. Amen. Amen. Because the creator made the sun and made the trees and the, and the birds. And they pray to him, rain or shine. And yet the humans tend to squabble and they move away because they're scared. And for me, it hurts because to fear, I'm sorry, the, the, the weapons won't hurt you. The virus won't hurt you. If you have all the faith in your heart to pray to him. Amen. Because Amen. when he loves you and he provides for Hallelujah. you. Hallelujah. Yes. He gives yes. freely. Amen. So it's so easy to take time out your, out your time and give him praise, regardless Amen. of where you're at, on the bus, on the street, wherever, because you have feet to walk. Some people who don't have to use instruments to walk. So we're blessed, at least I am. Amen. So Amen. when I walk from my place, then my beautiful sister picked me up from today. Yeah. You know, I ride the bus every day and I pray because the virus won't hurt me unless God says so. So it doesn't matter what. So I can't be afraid of it, but I fear of what my sovereign does every day. So I can pray. So if I'm on the bus or whatever, I pray. Thank you. And for me, it doesn't, like I agree, it doesn't matter who you are. Um, the creator made everything. So regardless, amen, amen. it doesn't matter. But there's too many people getting shot and too many people going to the cemetery. And for me, when you hit the cemetery, there's no turning back. None. So while they're living and breathing, regardless, love has no color and no flavor. Amen. So give regardless yes. and love and always, no matter what, Amen. always, you're the one that made. Because with him, he gives the world. But when you fear, it's a shame what you lose when you fear. Because the one that, that, that protects us is him. Thanks. We love you, sister. That's Thank good, you. good, good work. That's a blessing. Hallelujah. Thank, Thank you. God bless you always. Very kind words. Yes. Amen. There's a, there's a lot of fear right now. And the sister is right. We got to take out that fear. When the Creator knows everything, Creator knows what's happening. 20 years, uh, 5 years down the line. We don't know. We cannot. Even doctors predict this and that. They don't know. Right? We got to trust in our Creator. We got to trust in God. That's the thing. That's the focal point in life. Amen? God is good. Yes. Amen all the time. Amen? Yeah. So uh, today's topic is the greatest mission letter ever written. Have you ever noted? In, when you read the Bible, who is the person who wrote the greatest mission letter ever? Paul. Paul is the guy who is so gifted. God has talented him, given him that giftings to write that letter of evangelical letter, of a mission letter for us. Take it as a manual. Take it as a guide in our daily life. Amen? 
First, I want to read to you uh, about uh, the scripture, Colossians 1, 10, 30, if it's there. Before we go into that, I just want to share this with you. I haven't uh, given you the information. On Wednesdays, on Wednesdays, the church, listen to me. On Wednesdays, we have Bible study here. And we pray, and we pray for everyone. We go crazy. Myself, uh, Sister Veronica, Ragni, we are moving around. We're praying in the Holy Spirit. And we need to see more people coming in on Wednesday, 6.30, 7 o'clock. We pray here, then we do a Bible study, which is the book of Isaiah. Right? I need more people. People need to come in. We need to gather. We need to uh, rub shoulders. We need to sh rub shoulders to be stronger. Iron sharpens iron. Come on Wednesdays. Please do come on Wednesdays. Bring more friends. There'll be snacks available. There's coffee available. There's soft drinks available. Amen. Join us. On Thursday, we have virtual online Bible school. And some of you are not in the school, so not in the class. So I know that. But there's another class coming for part four in two, three, two weeks' time. And we have a book uh, which is to do with the Great Commission. That means what God has commissioned us to do on earth. Why are we here on earth? So join us in one of those classes. Virtual classes is awesome. You sit at home, get your coffee on your table, and put your laptop on or computer on, and be part of the class. That's no big deal. Enjoy, right? And that's very important. Also, whatever things we are preaching in this church and Brother Roy is singing all those songs is going on YouTube. Subscribe. Send it to your friends. Subscribe it. Send it to your friends, those, uh, 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 those YouTube videos. Give it to your relative. Because I had a three-week session talking about mine. How we are, there's so much shooting in this, in, in this nation. There's so much immoral things happening in this nation, and it's getting crazy. It's not stopping, it's getting wild. So what is happening, the mind, Satan is aff affecting the mind. It is the mind game. People are pay playing that mind game, and people are, you know, that's why the shooting, for small tidbit things, they start shooting. They don't care, the grandmother is out there. The lady who fed that grandkid, that kid goes and shoots a grandmother. That tells you a lot that the mind is distracted. So listen to those things. Listen to the YouTube uh, preaching I did and Brother Roy uh, took that worship. So everything I preach on, Brother Roy uh, relates that on his worship. So every time it's related, okay? So uh, follow that, that will help you. Share that out. and. Also, please, 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 join us for Bible study. And we, on, on the uh, first Friday of every month, we having a, what you call, movie night, and hot dogs, and pizza, and soft drinks. Join us. First week, next Friday, join us. Please, if first week, if we don't have it, I'll tell you. If, if it's cancelled, we'll tell you uh, when we're gonna have it. But we, if, if I promise that it should be first week, yeah, that's when first week. Another thing is we're going out on outreach. Next week, Saturday, we're planning on outreach. It all depends on people we getting together. We have apartment to target. We have already been there, and we know it's the harvest place. We need laborers in that place. Those are, who are the laborers? Me and you. We need more laborers, man. And sister said, we need doers of the work. We need people to go there and talk to them, pray to them. They need some love. Those people need that love. Amen. That's our job to do it. We are the laborers. Amen. Invite you next Saturday. And there's changes of plan, we'll let you know. 
but please, 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 I'll contact you and hoping you to come to part of this mission. Amen. So my study is the great, greatest missions letter ever written. Paul wrote that. Amen. In, uh, in uh, what you call Romans 15, I'll share that with you. See, we need to make our life count on earth. Can I say this again? You and I have a purpose on this earth. A real purpose, sister. Real purpose. You and I. First, our purpose is to our family, our children, our loved ones. Then to others around us. We knock. We need to knock that door and love our neighbors. Tell them God loves you. If you need any help, sister, brother, we, I'm there next door. We need to start getting up from that lazy uh, couch of ours and start moving. Amen? Start moving. Because that's the greatest mission in our life. That's the real purpose we are here. Amen? Make our life count, church. Make our life count. Let's pray. Lord, open every heart, every ears this morning, Father God. That they are receptive to your word through my mouth, Father God. That every word which comes out from the, my mouth, Father God, is through your spirit, Lord. Not my doctrine, but yours, Lord Jesus. Lord, I declare this in the mighty name of our Lord <coughs> Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God is good. So Colossians 1, 10, 13. It says, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. Listen to this. Paul is saying, then the way you live will always honor and please the Lord. That's the word saying, the scripture is saying. Says, the way you live is very important, and your lives will be, your lives will produce every kind of good fruit. So the way you live, Amen. You listening, the way I live, it will resemble the good fruit coming out of me. Every word he wants good fruit coming out of them, right? Amen, brother. We want good fruit to come out of our life. We want our children to be successful. Promotion, everything they're doing are blessed. Good fruit. That's what the scripture says. All the while you grow as you learn to know God better and better. You will grow. That's why I encourage people to be in the Bible studies. I encourage people to be in the prayer group. You cannot be a lone ranger in the church of God. Amen. You cannot. You got to be together. That's the whole purpose of a church. Eleven says, "We also pray that you be strengthened with all His glorious power." I'm going to read this again. He says, "We also pray." Paul is praying for Corinthian church, for for you know, uh, Ephesian church. All Paul is praying, even though he's in the jail. He says, "We also pray that you be strengthened." with all his glorious power so you will have all the endurance and patience you need sometimes our eyes deceives us remember i said the first thought comes in your mind you cannot trust your thinking is not always correct you need the holy spirit within you to make the right discernment to make the correctness of your thinking in order to say something out before you analyze their thinking. But a lot of people say it out and then, oops, I shouldn't have said that because they haven't thought over that thought before they made that statement. Amen. So we also pray that you'll be strengthened with this glorious power so you'll have all endurance and patience you need. We need a lot of in patience in our life because sometimes that endurance kills us. We cannot make it. Sometimes we want things to happen overnight in our life. Right? Overnight we want. But God puts us in that road for us to understand Him better. Amen? He says further, may you be filled with joy. Paul says, always thanking the Father. 
says you may be filled with joy always thanking the father oh my god brother do you always thank god when you are really in crisis mode when you are really down the hill do you thank god i thank god whenever i go through those crises because god says thank me he'll take you out of those crises he says always thanking the father he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light you are all living in the light so you have that in inheritance you are the heir to the throne of the mighty king of kings you are heir to the mighty king of king's throne you are sons and daughters amen 13 says for he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son jesus christ amen that was my introduction message the scripture but i'm going to share you a story this morning it broke my heart when i read this it's the story is about the call of Eagle Hill. It's called, it's a true story. The call of Eagle Hill. So there's two missionaries or school teachers whose name was John and Betty Stan. They, gra they graduated from, from Moody Bible School in Institute. They graduated from there and went to China as missionaries with China Inland Mission. So they were missionaries, young people, 25 years old. They served, listen to this, they served in September 1932 to December 1934 in China. On Thursday, <coughs> on Thursday church, December 6th of that year, the co communist military swept that village and took both of them captive. Saturday, December 8, the Reds announced in the streets that the foreigners would be executed. The reason the foreigners have ruined China. Only that was the reason. The foreigners have ruined China. That was the reason they're executing him. They're, they're going to kill, kill the man, the wife, and a one year kid, one year baby. A one year old daughter they were stripped of their all, all the clothes led them to eagle hill the baby the baby was left behind john stem was ordered to kneel before his wife so the wife is standing there john the missionary was told to kneel before the wife while speaking softly the young communist soldier beheaded him chopped his head off sorry for my language Betty did not scream the 25 year lady who had tons of future left she did not scream she trembled and lay down on John's body the same shot which was lifted on John, Betty to join her husband before the King of Kings. That's a living sacrifice we're talking about. This story can be told 100 times, 200 times, 1,000 times. But we don't, if we don't understand what it means to us, it's worthless of what Paul is saying. See, Paul's epistle to the Romans was, least, uh, was the greatest letter ever written in the history of the world. Any. He also suffered for that faith by writing that letter. I give you some reasons. Greatest because it contains the most outstanding unfolding of the condition of the world. 
the work of God to save it and the way, way God's people are to live in it. That was one. What he's basically saying is the world was corrupt. In the work of God was to save people's life who was going into corruption. And it was the job of God's people to leave it and to save those people. This is another one he wrote. And the greatest because all of all the inspired letters of the New Testament, of all the uninspired letters of history, Romans has been used by God to save more sinners than any other. If you read Romans 12 onward, 12 itself, one verses 1 and 2, talks about transformation of mind and body. Renewing your mind and spirit. Walking in the he heavenly realm rather than the worldly realm. Amen. In my own words, I'm saying this. But Romans talk, that is the greatest evangelical mission letter ever written. All of the book in Romans. Try studying that book of Romans. Amen. He talks about this. See, I come here this morning. My heart sometimes is so troubled. Because I love to see my brothers and sisters in church. I love to see them to rub shoulders in each other, to say hi, how you doing, you need help, and to pray for our families, our children, especially our loved ones. We are the people who are the heirs of his kingdom. If we are not in the kingdom, then the question is, where are we? That's why it breaks my heart. Therefore, I have great expectation as I try to get this message across across to you. I, you know, first this message is meant for me, then to you. Romans 15, 19. It says, they were convinced by the power of miracle signs and wonders by the power of God's spirit. In this way, I fully presented the good news of Christ from Jerusalem all the way to Assyria, to, you know, to the remaining rich people. What he's saying here, I'm trying my best to go out and proclaim that word. Tell the word, that's my job. The rest is God's. But if I don't do my work, then what am I doing? What is the real purpose in me? As, as son and daughters, what is the real purpose? Some of you will pass from death to life. I'm, I'm going to be real. And many of you will receive decisive guidance for your life. But at the end of the day, this is the guidance. We preach, we study, we talk about it. But at the end of the day, what choice you make is your choice. Amen. Romans 15, 20, this is what it says. 20 to 21, it says, My ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has been heard rather than where a church has already been started by someone else. This scripture is very important. This scripture is very important. My ambition has always been to preach the good news where the name of Christ has never been heard rather than where church has already been started by someone else. I was sharing this with brother Roy. You know what the some of our Christian brothers and sisters are doing right now? They are taking this word to another Christian. Why? Because they want to bring that Christian to their own church. But the scripture is very clear. He says, go out to the person who has not heard about the good news. Those are the people we should be targeting. Why we are going in circles? We should be projecting ourselves 
in the focal point which God established for us in order to go save souls, lost souls, who has never heard that good news. And our job is to give that good news. Amen. And 21 says, I've been following the plan spoken of in the scriptures where it says, those who have never been told about him will see. Those who have never been told about him will see. And those who have never heard of will listen to this. And those who have never heard of him will understand. I can tell you, relate to you stories after stories, what missionaries have done in South Africa and other places. There are people who are illiterate, who even cannot read the Bible. Those guys are preaching in South Africa now. They are preaching from the word of God, but they couldn't read that English word. How? It's through the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul is saying, we need to go and plant that seed. The rest is done by God. That's what we need to do. Isaiah 52, 15. See, our ambition should be to preach the gospel to anyone, to everyone. That's our mission. <clears throat> every person, every believer, every follower of Jesus Christ needs to do that, to preach. Isaiah 52, 15, as it is written, this is what is written, those who have never been told of him will see, and those who have never been, never heard will understand. But if you don't tell, how can they see, and how can they understand, if you don't tell them? You have a neighbor who, who's lost, who needs a direction, but if you don't tell them the good news, how will they know? They need to hear from you. So the signs you've been waiting for, God has given you that signs. Thank you, Noel. God has given you those signs, church. God has given you those signs. God has given you the manual. The question is, what you are doing with that manual? Are you studying that manual or it is in, in some self with cobwebs and dust on it and waiting for the day when you're gonna pick it up again? No, you need that manual daily. That manual needs to be checked and thoroughly understood daily. And we got to go through this. So the signs, that which has not been told, they need to see. See, we need to understand what needs to be told to them. If you don't understand yourself, how can you tell them? That's why this letter was written for the greatest mission for us. God says, follow your calling. You all, all of you, Sister, all of you, don't uh, uh, have low esteem about yourself. You, there's a calling for you. There's a calling. You may be walking someplace. There's a calling for you in that particular place. There's a calling. See, God has anointed us and put us in that particular place for a reason. For a reason. So now when you start studying the word of God, God starts speaking to you, infiltrating your kind of life and giving the, you that spiritual words, that words need to be taken out because that's the call of God. And you are the carrier of that word. You are that school bus driver which needs to deliver. You need to deliver that, that kid right at the doorstep of their parents' house in a safety mode. You need to deliver it on time. So every time you study the word of God, you're getting that message in you. You need to deliver it. You need to deliver that message on time because the opportunity arises every day in your life. Wherever you go at your workplace or you go to a friend's house or you meet a stranger, there's opportunity for you. It's how you deliver that's important. 
The calling is for everyone, not only for pastors and leaders, brother. Everyone in the house, even for small kids, there's a calling. The great, greatest missionary support letter is in Romans, the book of Romans. Church, the, at least you think that I'll be squeezing Romans into it. See, you might be thinking right now, I am you know, giving all this information about Romans uh, and mobilizing you to go on missions, right? Yes. Yes. I, I'm not going to be uh, joking about it. When we have missionaries way in Europe, in Poland, in Philippines, in Spain, in Central America, thousands, in Hong Kong, in Fiji, even Fiji Islands has a, our church there. And all over the world, our churches are there, our missions. There is a calling, church. They, this letter, read this letter. This is the letter Paul wrote for us. There's a calling for us to mobilize ourselves and start moving. Start moving from where? From next door to your neighbor, from your workmate from your brothers and sisters who are depressed, from your brothers and sisters in your community who needs your support and help right now. You need to mobilize yourself. Start reading this letter, amen? Church, the gospel is not meant only for you. It's in partnership. If you keep the words for yourself only, it's like a well where you have all the algae or whatever fungus all covered, a stagnant well, where it's not overflowing. You need a well which is overflowing with new water coming in and you're giving out. You don't need a stagnant well. Don't become a stagnant well. God doesn't, didn't create a stagnant well, okay? So gospel, the good news is always in partnership. We got to spill it out. We got to share that. Romans 15. Oh, okay. Romans 1 5, I think. Yeah, that's the one. Listen to this. It says, Paul is saying, We have received grace. How many of you should receive grace this morning? Yes? God has given you grace. That's a free gift. You receive grace. An apostleship, an apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith for the sake of his name among all nations. That's your job and my job. That is who I am. That is my calling. That is why I do what I do best is to spread the word of God. How I do it? I read what is the great missionary support letter for us. Amen. Amen. Romans 15, 23. 23 to 24. Right? See, he explains in this letter, he wants them to get involved in, in their calling into the nations. I'm inviting you to get involved in your calling to your own neighbors, to your workmates, to your friends, to your families, your own families who are lost. You need to start calling. You need to call their names and pray for them. Amen. He writes, since I no longer have any room for work in these regions, since I have longed for many years to come to you in Rome, I hope to see you in passing as I go to Spain and to be helped in my journey there by you. Once I've enjoyed your company for a while, and he writes further, therefore I've completed this and have delivered to them in Jerusalem what has been collected, I leave for Spain. So Paul is saying about his, uh, his trip. He's explaining how he's gonna go to this place, this place, this place. You know what? At the age of 14, my daughter was on a mission trip to Philippines. At the age of 14, I haven't even put foot on Philippines. In our brother sister's from Philippines. But what I'm saying, she was out in the streets in Philippines preaching the word of God. And God has blessed her so much. She's still 
on that spree right now, traveling the world. She's in Italy right now. She was in London last week. But at the same time, I know for sure, she trusts God and if opportunity arises, she'll share the word of God and pray for other brothers. And she does this the best. Because what happens to her, she shows her true color of love. Only thing she shows is love for other people. Amen. And that's how she connects with, with other people, with other races. That's how she connects best with other people, is through her love. That's the only way. And she is adamant at that, keeping that love on the spree and blessing everyone. So just to finish off this, church, See, God saves us. We know that. God saves us by grace through faith. Right? You're saved by your faith, but His gift was given to you. Through His gift of grace, you're saved by faith, believing in Him. Amen? So, God has decreed that this great rescue is from His wrath. God could have killed us. I would have died seven times. I should have been dead seven times. At one point in time in my life, I had hundreds of, I've mentioned this, I have hundreds of hundred people in my bed, uh, in my uh, hospital bed. They're coming to farewell me that I would be dead. But God's grace saved me. God has a plan for you, brothers and sisters. God will never abandon you. The God call is for all of us, not only for Pastor John or Brother Roy, but all of us. There is a calling for all of us down on the streets. There is a call. See Romans 10, 15. I don't know whether I have it there or not. 10, 15. I think I have it there. Romans 10, 15. Yeah, good girl. <laughs> Romans 10, 15, it says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Isn't that beautiful word? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Amen. Listen to me. Make your feet beautiful. Go and preach the good news. Otherwise, your feet's going to be dirty all day long. Go preach the good news. It says, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Go do it. The world will not think so. Sometimes you go out and preach and share the word. Some people say, this guy is crazy. He shouldn't be preaching on the street. He shouldn't be... Uh, uh, telling about the love uh, stories in the street. There's no love thing, no more thingy anymore in this world. It's myself. But now there is love. We need to believe in that love, which is given by Jesus Christ. See, the world will not think so, but God does. What you do, God does think. Your name is being written in the book of life. My guess is that most of you in this room in this church right now think of yourselves as pretty average when it comes to your looks right look at me i'm average i'm not a handsome guy i'm average guy mm -hmm. if i cut off my hair i would more look like paul okay not every person is handsome or beautiful here not very pretty just plain simple people that's what we are that's good because we wouldn't want you to be distracted by caring too much about your looks we're not the celebrities who worry about their looks. There was this celebrity, I was watching a Korean movie. Uh, this celebrity got out, while she got on the street, before she got on the street, she did all the makeup because she had all the pimples and all these things here. So she covered all this uh, thing because she acted in movies, all she had was all the makeups. So they didn't see the real stuff of her. But she had that pride in, you know, celebrity, she, all the people love it. She got millions of, uh, uh, you know, people 
fans or whatever you call it, they uh, writing on the Facebook all this thing. There's there's this gentleman who's staying next door to this celebrity, and he's a simple guy, and she doesn't know her, but she guises by seeing her. She says, "Oh, he's nobody," so she guises every time. One day, she has a stomach ache in her room. There's nobody to help her. So she goes, opens the door and knocks on this neighbor's door and asks for her. So this guy sees her face for the first time without a makeup. <laughs> now well, what will happen to you without a makeup? <laughs> he might be seeing that she's come out of the horror movie. Yeah. yeah? And he is so shocked, but she's explaining to him, I am that celebrity staying next to her, and, she, and he's saying, no, I don't, I can't believe it. But she's rolling down on the floor, so this guy helps out. That's, what I'm trying to say is that people looks at the face, and that's how they make the face, you know? That's how they see things through their eyes right now in this world. But God sees it differently. And God wants us to see differently at different people. The way we need to see other people is through God's eyes, not through our own eyes. That's what we need to start praying about. Amen? So, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. How ugly, how crazy you look. That doesn't matter, but just imagine what God is saying, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Amen. You know why? My guess is that most of you in this room, I mean, I explained this, right? But how, when, when he says how beautiful are the feet of those who risk their lives to tell the good news, that is the most amazing part in life. Risk their life. Remember the story I told you? about those two missionaries in China. Those are the beautiful feet, risking their lives to tell the good news. Church, there's no salvation among the unreached peoples of the world without world missions. Amen? Can I hear some amen, amen. this morning? Amen. There's no salvation. You know the people and the missionaries in the forefront? Well, that's the people we should be praying for. They are, have that beautiful feet. Make it count, church. I'm finishing off. Make it count. Grow deep. Get ready to die well. Give yourself sacrificially to the kingdom of God and what it really matters for you being alive right now. Don't waste in superficial things. Don't waste your time unnecessarily, superficially. Grow deep into the word of God. I'm repeating this again. Make it count. Make it count. Finishing off. The truth is that we all have choice. Amen, brother? Amen. We all have choice. I mean, I cannot force you. I can only share to you, preach to you, show you God's love. But the truth is that all have a choice when it comes down to how we spend this one life we have. This one life we have. The choice is with you. Let's pray. Lord, our Heavenly Father, we come to you, Lord Jesus. Lord, we at times, Father God, we forget, Lord, what our mission is on this earth, Father God. Lord, bring us back, Father God, to reality, Father God. Show us the way, Lord Jesus. Give us that guts, Father God. Give us that strength, Father God, and boldness and courage like you did to Joshua, Father God. Lord, we can conquer those Canaans, Father God. We can conquer those unsaved ones, Father God. That they can come 
into salvation. Enjoy your, your blessings, Lord Jesus. Lord, we just thank you. Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. I want to give you a chance to uh, respond to the Lord. So as we sing this closing song, sing this from the bottom of your heart. And sing it as if you really mean it. Okay, so let's all stand as we close. Come and fill our homes with your presence. You alone are of our reverence as for me and my house we will serve the Lord as for me and my house we will serve the Lord as for me and my house we will serve the For me and my house, we will 
them abundantly this week father god be with them bring favor in their lives father god lord whoever they rub shoulders with lord lord bring that anointing father god and blessing lord jesus in the name of our lord jesus christ go forth into the world in peace in the name of jesus amen